Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest for today's show, our judge, Nelson Johnson, author, and Ralph Hunter, founder and director of the African American Heritage Museum of Southern New Jersey. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Mike, we're glad to be here. I'm delighted. Listen, I could not be honored. Uh, these guys uh, coming on out tonight and uh, joining us here at Stockton University to talk a little history, talk a little present day, and talk a little future. Uh, gosh, I would be remiss if I wouldn't say, starting from left to right, Mr. Hunter, please introduce yourself and tell the folks at home a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Ralph Hunter. I'm president and founder of the African American Heritage Museum, which was first started back in uh, 02. So we're celebrating our 20th anniversary as of February of last year. So it's really, really exciting to have the opportunity to come and hang out with you guys today and talk a little Atlantic City. Atlantic City's in my blood, and I'm sure it's in yours by now. Absolutely, and uh, Judge Johnson. Mike, uh, I'm a retired Superior Court judge. Uh, I'm also a full-time writer now. Uh, the two books that are relevant tonight are Boardwalk Empire and The North Side. Boardwalk Empire inspired the HBO series. The North Side was a sequel to Boardwalk Empire. I tell people of the two books, the North Side is the more important one. Uh, because if you remove the African-American experience from Atlantic City's history, the town never comes to be. What it, what it is, I don't know. Maybe it's Brigantine, maybe it's Seattle City. I have no idea. But it's not a resort that's able to host millions of people. And, and this is definitely what we're going to touch on. I would like to say about that first book, New York Times bestseller, but this here was uh, the one that grabbed me. In terms me. of importance, right. The North Side's the more important book. I, I agree with you 100%. And one of the first conversations I had when I moved to Atlantic City full time was with Mr. Hunter. I don't know if he recalls this, but we were talking. Uh, I couldn't remember. I don't remember exactly what meeting or what association, but we started talking about what went on in uh, the inlet, the AC inlet, the amount of doctors and the uh, just the, the hustle and bustle that was happening there. And I would love for the both of you to reflect on that, if you could, for our audience. Well, the exciting part about Atlantic City's north side, it's, it was pretty important to have the opportunity to come to Atlantic City back in the early 50s on a bus trip and to see all of these people owning and operating their own businesses. Uh, walking down the street, listening to music coming out of the nightclubs of the Club Harlem, going around the corner, seeing the great restaurants and the boarding houses and the hotels, uh, owned and operated by people who look like me. And I was really fascinated. I just couldn't believe I was in a world such as Atlantic City. I'd come out of Philadelphia, out of the church, and so I had never seen this nightlife of Atlantic City. And I was really, really excited to have the opportunity to do that. So it's been in my blood. I love it. It's my, part of my DNA. And we talk more and more about Atlantic City. It's just a great place to have worked and grew up. It's just outstanding community. And the people here are just unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Judge Johnson? What, what Mr. Hunter's touching on, touching on is very important. Uh, the north side was sort of a city within a city. Because of segregation, blacks were pushed to the north side of Atlantic City. But they responded to the challenge by creating their own city within a city. So when he talked about the things that he came to see in the, in the 1950s, it's very accurate uh, that there were hotels, there were, there were restaurants, there were nightclubs. Uh, back in the day, Atlantic City's north side was able to sustain 11 full-time physicians. Today, there isn't one. Mm. And that shows you how things have changed and not for the better over the years. But in its prime, Atlantic City's North Side was really sort of a mecca for entertainment and was a mecca for, for people looking, for African-American people looking for, you know, a, a place to go when they got to the resort. And so there was a lot of businesses that did thrive on the North Side. And to speak on some of those business, Miss Washington and some of the entertainers that came in and leaders, as we were speaking of uh, before this interview, some of those leaders, Mr. Honor. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It was a young lady by the name of Madam Sarah Spencer Washington. And of course, she was the head of a company called Apex Hair Care Products. She was one of the first African-Americans in the United States of America, male or female, to own and operate her own golf course. Unbelievable. She also employed close to 3,500 people uh, around the world as, as 
people starting their own businesses. So she was a lady who gave African-American women an opportunity to become entrepreneurs. The first set of real entrepreneurs in this country were African-American women. How about that? Yeah. I mean, well, no, he, he, Mr. Hunter is definitely correct. Sarah Spencer Washington was one of the first, I'm certain within the first, let's say five, but probably first two or three, female African-Americans to be a multimillionaire. Brigantine Hotel, she, she owned it, but she had to buy it under somebody else's name because the owner wouldn't sell to a black person. Okay. The, what, what year was this roughly? Uh, that would have been in the, in the 30s. Yeah, yeah. 20s, or, 20s or 30s, yeah. late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. And, and, and the, she owned the golf course too in, in Pomona. Uh, she, was, she was a mogul. And touching on what Mr. Hunter said, she had many schools around the world, many graduates, and she would lend them money to get started, conditioned upon buying her product, okay, Apex. Uh, but she lent it interest-free. So she, she understood that if you give out a little bit, you get back a lot. And, and she, had, she had quite a dynasty. And the beauty of that, from reading your books and, and talking to Mr. Hunter and doing some more research and whatnot, was a lot of those young men and women, whether it was uh, Miss Washington's uh, courses and with Apex, came back to the community and stayed in this city, uh, oh. which I think we're kind of missing now. Well, that happened because there were many beauty parlors throughout the city and throughout southern New Jersey. But these people were from all over the East Coast. They were in Chicago, they were in Baltimore, Washington, New York, all over where she had her universities, where she taught these young ladies how to become these great entrepreneurs. So she just wasn't in Atlantic City. She was an international corporation. Johanna, Johannesburg, yeah. South yeah. Africa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Havana, <laughs> Cuba. Yeah. No. Yeah, she was she was yeah, a mogul. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, when you say it like that and put those uh, locations out there, it's worldwide. I mean, Atlantic City yeah. was when you go into Boardwalk Hall, you see WPG. Yeah. People ask, "What is that all the time?" It was the world's playground, and I don't mean just right. for entertainment. Right. It was uh, you could do pretty much anything uh, in this city. I would say the Northeast was that something was prevalent all throughout the Northeast, or was that? Atlantic City type. No, it was prevalent throughout the whole country right. because you had areas where the African Americans who left the Deep South after slavery and came up here doing Brown versus Board of Education mm -hmm. in the early 50s came north to come out of the cotton fields and tobacco farms and they came north to work in the hospitality industry. So being part of the hospitality industry, Atlantic City was a great fit for them. So they would come here and work in the hotels and they'd work the hotels, work the boardwalk and they built the railroad and they built the town they cleared the beaches, and he did a wonderful, wonderful job of making Atlantic City what it is today. But these groups of people were from all over the country who came here. A lot of them were from the Deep South who came north to Atlantic City. One of my passions, yeah. in addition to history, is art. And one of my favorite artists is a gentleman named Jacob Lawrence. He, he painted a large number of paintings depicting just what Mr. Hunter is talking about, which is the migration from the south to the north. He was born in Atlantic City. How about that? Right on Kentucky and Arctic Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, guys, hold those thoughts right there. Folks, stick around. We'll be right back with these two gentlemen. Uh, so honored to be with them. Stick around. Mm -hmm. 